Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Craig Weisbaum, uh, and uh, we're going to start with this Talking Tree Creative uh, uh, webinar now. Uh, our subject is producing a successful corporate event with Strategic Creative. So uh, first things first, just housekeeping. Uh, instructions to join or rejoin the webinar are available in your registration email, or you can join online at uh, the, the uh, meetings.ringcentral.com website. Uh, I think the uh, ID is 1490-669-538. That's 1490-669-538. That's the meeting ID. All right, so let's get started. Uh, a little bit about myself, just to introduce myself. Uh, Craig Weisbaum, I am the uh, president and founder of Talking Tree Creative. Uh, I have 25 plus years in the event production, video production, and entertainment industries. Uh, and we, are, we have won many awards, uh, both for Addies for advertising on videos and uh, ISIS, uh, International Special Events Society, awards for uh, top corporate events and others. We're headquartered in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have our core team is made up of creatives and technical people. Uh, so we kind of put those two things together uh, in a very uh, uh, foundational way. Uh, our, we offer full service capabilities of event production, video production, and live entertainment production. Uh, we serve corporations, nonprofits, governments, uh, both regionally and nationally. Uh, we have uh, most of our clients are enterprise level uh, 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 clients, as you see on screen, uh, and nonprofits. Uh, and then a few uh, 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 commercial, uh, 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 smaller, mid, small to mid-sized businesses all, also. So let's talk about uh, producing a, a great corporate event uh, and what are the challenges of doing so. Uh, event production is complex, it's time consuming, and it's logistically intense. There are a lot of moving parts. Uh, the mechanics of produ production often overwhelm the creative intentions uh, behind the event strategy because there are so many moving parts. Uh, event managers often find themselves desperate uh, to hit deadlines, uh, managing vendors rather than collaborating with them, uh, and happy to just produce a good enough event and basically get through the process uh, and come out the other end. Uh, and they, we often settle for that. Uh, you know, what you envisioned was something grand like this, and maybe what you got uh, was something like this, uh, a bare room with, you know, just uh, the basics. Uh, and even then, you may deem it a success because you held the event, lots of people came, some people spoke, you could kind of hear what they said, the lights stayed on, the electricity didn't go off, um, nobody's cell phone rang too many times, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you were able to check your minimum criteria boxes and, uh, you know, in, in often in these cases, the audience may have said nothing uh, about any of, any of the uh, underwhelming um, uh, uh, executions that, that happened uh, because they were adequate. And sometimes adequate is good enough. What you're really doing in that case is you're coordinating an event. Uh, you know, you, you set the date and time, you chose the venue, uh, you announced that uh, the event on your website maybe marketed it a little bit. Um, you made sure there was catering, you know, that there was a microphone uh, and uh, ended on time, hopefully. Uh, but what you really were, were doing were coordinating the bare minimum basics. Uh, and again, sometimes that's fine, uh, but sometimes you, you should be aiming for higher than that. What you really want to be doing is producing an event. And really, producing is much different than event coordination. Uh, in fact, we have a position on our team that is an event coordinator. It is one part of it, and it's an important part, but producing is a much bigger picture. So in producing an event, uh, you, you're defining a strategy, you're creating a theme, you're generating excitement, uh, you're designing the environment, you know, what the, the actual surroundings that the people are in and how, they, how it makes them feel, what it smells like and looks like and feels like. Uh, and, and you're integrating imagery, uh, including audio and video uh, and sound, uh, uh, you know, other than speaking uh, audio. Uh, and, and you're doing this to create that experience. So um, uh, 
and that's the last thing we have on this slide, you'll notice it's creating a memorable audience experience. That's the key to everything. Uh, and that's really the goal. That's the, the reason that we do this, is uh, to create that memorable audience experience. So, you know, how do we close this gap between, you know, what we settle for or, you know, uh, what we actually get uh, and what our, what our vision is? Uh, how do we close that gap? Well, you know, the gap between our expectations and the execution uh, has some root causes. Um, some of them are unclear business goals of the event. Uh, your leadership is divided among departments, teams, and people. Uh, maybe even your boss uh, is not, uh, you know, is not on, um, uh, on target with the goal uh, the same way you are, uh, or some other senior exec that's also uh, involved in the event is. Um, the budget may not be clearly defined, or it may be uh, conflicted. Uh, different people want the budget spent, in, you know, focused in, in different areas. Um, uh, some, one department wants part, more of the budget spent on X, and the other one wants more spent on Y or Z. Um, your timeline may be unrealistic, and this is very common, especially with large enterprises. You know, the executives, they think they can do everything last minute. And they usually can't. No, nobody can. Uh, they can. They can get through it last minute, but they can't do it right uh, by doing it last minute. We come across that all the time. Uh, there's a, there may be a lack of a written event strategy. Uh, so the actual uh, strategic um, goals for the event uh, uh, and what what we want to achieve. Uh, and it, as usual with every event, there's too many moving parts. Uh, so these are some of the uh, causes, uh, and um, you know we we try to address these uh, in our process. Uh, so closing this gap, our process for closing it is called strategic creative, uh, as we uh, referred to in the title. Uh, so begin by creating an event strategy. Uh, what do we want to achieve? Uh, take responsibility for forming and managing the event uh, against that strategy. Uh, and this creates leadership, by the way, uh, because, you know, uh, when, when we hold ourselves or, or our team members to a strategic goal uh, and, and then, you know, we try to execute in, in support of that goal, uh, it really does, it creates, uh, it, it makes us grow. Uh, so it's a really a good, good thing to practice. It's just like any other kind of exercise. Uh, we use the process of forming the strategy to align the various moving parts. Um, uh, and th that those parts are the inter internal teams, uh, event budgets and timelines and target dates, uh, vendor selection and management, and uh, the executive expectations and objectives. Uh, so we talk about strategic crate creative is our uh, process for closing this gap and, and creating a better event. Uh, you know, what is strategic creative, uh, really? Uh, well, it's a process for effectively planning and executing the corporate events. It's a method for connecting the dots so that moving parts don't become disconnected. Uh, and it's a framework that creates clarity within your team and between you and your event uh, production partner. Uh, so it's basically the nuts and bolts of the process that can create this event that is dynamic and engaging. Strategic creative recognizes that most, that the most important constituency in planning your corporate event is, any guesses? It's the people who fill these seats and the people who fill these seats, depending on whatever seats you have. The most important event constituency is your audience. There's no question uh, whether they're your customers, whether they're your staff, uh, stakeholders, team members, um, but, you know, value-added resellers. It doesn't matter if they're in, if they're your audience. They're important enough for you to be messaging to them. Then they are the most important constituency. Uh, certainly, in in what we do, the way we look at an event or any production that that we produce, uh, whether it's a video or whether it's a, a an entertainment package uh, or the whole event. Uh, we are playing to the audience. If we can engage them, if we can, uh, you know, make a, a bond, a strong bond with them, then 
we're successful and on your behalf, we're successful uh, and you're successful. So going along, uh, what, what is strategic creative? It, it focuses on planning the layers of the audience's experience. Again, our most important constituency. What kind of experience do we want our audience to have and why? What are the outcomes we should drive toward in order to motivate our audience effectively? And how can we entertain, educate, and engage them? Uh, this is the first question we ask whenever we're uh, briefing for a new client or a new project. Uh, the first question is always, who's the audience? What's their demographic? You know, uh, who are they? And uh, you'll see as we get into the layers of the experience uh, of, of, of strategic creative, you know, why that's so important, because that is the ultimate goal. So let's get in, dive in, the, the layers of the experience. Uh, there are seven uh, that make up a great event. Uh, we have our audience, as we just discussed. We have the message and theme. Uh, so, you know, the message is, is uh, you know, what are we trying to say, convey to them? And the theme is what's gonna carry that, that message. The story, uh, which is, you know, we have to have some kind of uh, transformational experience and that's always best told in a story. Um, you, we all have a story and uh, uh, that's an important aspect of carrying that message forward. Uh, the framework, the environment, the content, and the execution. So those are the seven layers and we'll get into detail on all of them. So let's start at the beginning with the audience. So we have some priorities and questions, as I just mentioned, about the audience as to who they are and uh, how do we communicate to them. Uh, so who is our target audience? What are their demographics and behaviors? What kind of music do they like? What kind of, you know, what, how do they spend their spare time? Uh, how old are they? What sex? All that. Uh, uh, what motivates and, and engages them? That's basically what we're trying to find out. What beliefs, beliefs do we want them to take away from this event? Uh, what actions do we want them to take after the event? Uh, do we want them to uh, advocate for a particular policy? Do we want them to promote uh, our uh, uh, ideals or our ideas or, or our product? Do we want them to buy our product? Uh, do we want them to donate to our event uh, or to our, uh, our cause? Uh, so there are certain actions that we're trying to elicit from this audience, uh, and uh, those are important to know. And then you have to obviously know who you're asking to do these things. Uh, so that's layer one. Layer two is the message and the theme. Uh, so this is going to be uh, how we focus the message and theme is going to be, uh, if you think of the message as the cargo and the theme as the vehicle. Uh, the theme, uh, you know, it, it may be uh, peak performance, uh, you know, reach your highest peak. Well, that's to, uh, that theme uh, is a vehicle to carry the message about working hard and persistence and practicing uh, or whatever, you know, whatever your message is that pertains to reaching that goal. Um, so it's all about the cargo, the message is what do we want to communicate and why, and uh, what should the audience come to believe, understand, or accept, um, or act upon as a result of that. And then the theme is how we carry that. Uh, what context should we create so the message is effectively communicated. Now let's uh, uh, develop the story. So everybody has a story, as we said. The elements that make up a compelling story are personal narratives. So these could be keynote speakers that are telling a personal story, uh, direct experience by customers, clients, etc. cetera, um, transformations. And every good story has a transformation where uh, a character uh, transforms from one state to another. They grow in some way. Uh, and we want the audience to grow in some way too through this story. Uh, so um, we, we might have examples of uh, case studies or uh, in corporate uh, meetings, we might use customer testimonials as examples, uh, them telling their story. Uh, but including stories in your event is extremely important and a, a major you know, one of our major layers. Presenting a vision um, of what has been, what could be, what will be. So uh, that's another way to tell a story. So how can we effectively tell a compelling story? Well, 
you know, pre-event communications uh, help to set it up, uh, documentary videos, on-site pre-function imagery and content. In fact, uh, speaking about pre-event communications, there was a famous uh, band, this is probably 10, 15 years ago, um, but uh, towards the, the beginning of uh, the internet, and uh, they had a, they set a tour across the country and they would send out emails um, from, you know, wherever they were on their tour. And it was kind of like, you know, coming to your town. And uh, as they, uh, as they uh, told their story um, throughout their trip, their tour uh, through the country, um, and they, you know, you could see where they were going on, on the map. Uh, you could, it created suspense as they were going to come to your city or town. And uh, it was very, uh, it was a very compelling campaign that they did, uh, uh, which was all pre-event because then it all was coming before they actually got there. Uh, you can also, uh, um, uh, you need to use a consistent language and emphasis on your theme uh, and uh, event experience that unfolds in stages. So you can have things develop throughout the course of your production. Um, and then after your production post-event, uh, communications and actions. Uh, all of these things create interactive uh, act, uh, activities and engagement uh, with your audience. Uh, and they're all different elements that you can use any or all of. You probably would never use all of them at the same time, but you know, in, in telling your story. So the next layer is our framework. And uh, uh, the framework is uh, kind of the key components uh, of, the, of the structure of your event. So uh, it's the project objectives and outcomes, uh, how you're going to map those out, uh, the creative strategy, how you're going to, uh, what you're going to create and how you're going to create it uh, really uh, to serve that goal. Uh, the venue selection criteria, which sometimes is major and sometimes it doesn't matter that much. Uh, but there are usually a few elements of the venue selection that manage a great deal, and they may be different elements for each kind of event. Uh, and then beginning to define the technical requirements, such as what kind of lighting, what kind of audio, what kind of video uh, production you need, and staging. Uh, and then, the, of course, the day of the event responsibility as far as who does what. So the framework is kind of the, just what you would think of it if you were engineering a physical thing that is your event. It's the structural framework that holds it up. Uh, the next layer uh, of this process is the environment. Um, and we address the environment uh, uh, as something that we have to engineer also, or design. And really a little of both. We both design and engineer the environment. So, and we refer to it as engineering the environment. Now this should not be confused with the space that you're holding your event in. It's different. It's more than that. So you take the space that you're holding your event in, that can offer a particular environment for your meeting, but it's not likely to be exactly the environment that, that you need or want to serve your particular message and goals. Uh, now, in rare instances, it happens to, you happen to find the right place for your message and strategy and you don't have to do much to it. Um, but um, more often than not, you want to, you all at least want to look at it as something to be engineered. If many of those factors that you would include are already there, that's great. Uh, that saves you time and, and money, but you need to look at it with that eye. And the key components of the environment are the branding uh, for your event and your messaging, the creative uh, uh, um, uh, elements that get in, uh, included in the environment, acoustics, you know, how do things sound? Not just can you hear them, but you know what's the what's the tonal quality of the acoustics? Um, do you is it very echoey? Maybe you need a, a lot of um, you know near field speakers uh, that are going to that are going to be crystal clear uh, and not uh, not give you a lot of room bounce in the in the in the in the sound. Um, the backgrounds, uh, what's behind people who are speaking or who are on camera or who are on stage. Uh, the audience flow, how do they get into the room, out of the room, uh, into the other room? You know, what's the flow of the audience throughout the event space? Uh, and then setting that mood that you want the environment uh, to, to set, which really directly affects how do you want them to feel. Uh, just a second, please.
had to take care of that. Uh, okay, on to the next layer. So we're on to layer six, uh, the content. So uh, let's look at the strategic considerations for content. Strong content is what drives your event. Uh, you don't want to create a beautiful event and then deliver mediocre content and uh, unpolished presenters. Uh, you, you get often on, uh, especially on corporate events where you have senior execs get up there uh, and you know some are very good at presenting and others aren't. Uh, some need a lot of rehearsal, some don't need any. Uh, and some work better with a teleprompter and some uh, without. But, uh, but you, you want to at least make sure that the content you're showing uh, is really dynamic and is going to capture people's attention. Uh, components and content strategy include video presentations, um, which we will often pepper. If you've got somebody with a, you know, a million slides uh, talking forever, kind of like I'm doing here, uh, but no graphic content and, um, and they've got a live audience, we'll pepper it with some, some uh, video content that just kind of refreshes the palette and, and your attention span uh, uh, every so often. Uh, live presenters, uh, good live presenters especially, are, they're, they're fantastic. It's like sitting down and watching a play. Uh, scripted remarks. Uh, presentation themes and motion graphics, live entertainment, you know, musical entertainment. Uh, um, it could be artistic live painting, uh, you know, on stage. Uh, and then uh, uh, controlling the run of show, which is the flow of the event. Uh, also, we call them cue scripts or, um, you know, fl show flow scripts. But uh, having um, a run of show where you have uh, absolute control over the timing of the event. I think that's like one of the most important aspects of content uh, um, and, and of control over an event is timing. Timing is everything. If you ever go to a, uh, a, a major motion picture to a movie theater, uh, you know, the timing of a film is absolutely probably the most critical component of that film. It could be shot on horrible, you know, cameras with a horrible director. But if the timing, if the editing is done well and the timing is, is right, it'll, it'll, carry, uh, it, it'll carry forward. I mean, it'll, it'll uh, get across the message. Uh, so timing is, uh, the way to control timing is through a script, a very clear cut cue to cue script or run of show. So that brings us to our last layer, uh, layer seven, which is execution. So we got all of this strategy and all these tactics and content and framework and structure to, to put all this stuff together and we're ready to execute. Now we're talking about a whole different thing. Uh, now we're talking about not just following directions, not just following the plans, but uh, having real technical knowledge to know how to hook things together and get machines and a crew of people to work together um, to execute it as you would a live, really you're, what you're doing is a live television production, uh, the equivalent of a live television production or a live Broadway show. Um, it's really a show. Uh, and there are a lot of technical considerations that most people take completely for granted. Uh, and so when you get to this step of execution, uh, it includes things like the event production team uh, and coordination of this team and these guys and gals really operate as uh, a symphony orchestra would uh, or anything else. Um, you know, uh, we've had uh, uh, corporate events where there's a lot of uh, uh, presentation done by the, um, you know, by the executives that are, are, are presenting. Uh, and they don't realize that, you know, they ask for, uh, well, here I want to go from this slide and then I want to show a video and then I want to go, then I want to show two things at the same time and then I want to do an audience poll. And that is all great. And, and in fact, we design that kind of thing into our shows, but uh, you need for the crew to be able to rehearse it also because it's, it's like a dance that's going on between, you know, you've got a 10 or 15 person crew or bigger uh, that's running all the different equipment uh, to make this presentation happen. Uh, and they've all got to be on point and coordinated with the person on stage who's actually doing the speaking and the presenting. And uh, so it really is truly a dance with all these people. And 
so much of it goes unseen and really good teams of uh, event production teams will make it that way. They'll, you know, you won't even know, realize how much is going on backstage uh, or at front of house. Uh, so they're very important. Uh, a technical director runs the event. Uh, you know, he's the captain of the ship or she's the captain of the ship. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's, that's the person who basically calls the cues. Uh, and you have to have that person in place. Uh, the venue uh, and vendor and staff tasks are choreographed. So, you know, uh, the whole production team has to be choreographed with the ven venue, especially when it comes time for um, breaks and, uh, you know, uh, when the audience is gonna, or the attendees are gonna uh, be uh, br uh, break from the event. Uh, and, you know, the, the venue needs to know to have their, their break stations for catering up and, ready to go and you just really have to coordinate all that thing, house lights up and down and all that kind of thing. Um, and then the production de details, uh, the deliveries, setup and testing timeframes, presenter rehearsals, signage, registration, guest services, catering, and event operations. Uh, so there are a lot of, all these bits and pieces come together on the execution side. Uh, and uh, it, that this is why between all these layers, you can see how how coordinated it needs to be and why it's good to have a, a production company or a creative lead that controls all of it or at least oversees all of it. So putting all these layers together, we get, we raise the success of our events. Uh, the better we put these layers together, the better we really uh, uh, can succeed. So what are the benefits of this approach? Um, why do we go through all of this and not just do it the easy way? Well, uh, focusing on the layers of the experience allows everyone to center on the audience as priority number one. Again, their experience as a audience is the most important thing that we focus on. Uh, executives, to under, it allows executives to understand the complexity and the depth of the event production process. Uh, they don't want to know all the details, but uh, they need to know enough to understand uh, the com that it is complex and it's probably deeper than they thought. And uh, it really is when they understand that, it, it's better for everybody, uh, including the company overall that's putting on the event because you get, you get better results. Uh, it, it allows the staff to achieve, achieve clarity about their roles and responsibilities, again, better efficiency. Uh, vendors to align consistently with your goals and with one another uh, in the production process. Again, better efficiency uh, and higher quality. Uh, audience, it allows the audience to partic uh, participants to attend an event with a clear direction and leave with a great experience. So again, our final goal, the audience having a great experience. So that's pretty much it for uh, uh, our uh, strategic creative process and uh, the layers of, of it. And I uh, just wanted to open it up for uh, questions or comments. Uh, I think everybody should have, uh, see a chat window there. Um, and uh, I've got Chris looking to see if there are any comments. Uh, also, we can, uh, if you'd like, we can uh, probably just unmute people. How many, how many do we have, Chris? Uh, so yeah, just unmute them. Okay. Um. And no questions? Uh. Okay. You can actually uh, unplug the uh, headphones so I can hear. So, all right, well, let's look at the key takeaways. I think our key takeaways are you want to produce an event, not just coordinate it. Uh, you can begin by focusing on the audience experience. Use a proven framework like Strategic Creative to produce your event. Build around the seven layers of the experience. That's the audience, the message and the theme, the story, the framework, the environment, the content, and the execution.
And finally, uh, learning about, if you want to learn more about Strategic Creative, please go to our website at TalkingTreeCreative.com. Also, uh, you can go to TalkingTreeCreative.com slash Strategic Creative for our particular article on that. You can also read more on our blog uh, at TalkingTreeCreative.com slash blog. And uh, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter on ta TalkingTreeCreative.com slash subscribe. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time.